I'd like to welcome in Tech Trader once again, Sean Udell, and we are going to talk some of his favorite names. What's up, Sean? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are we? Are we? Are we going to talk a little fiber optics today? Yeah, I think that is on the agenda. Before we do that, and like how we usually do, uh, I like to get your assessment of where we are in the NASDAQ as a whole. We've now popped above that 200-day moving average, and we've kind of settled in. Um, have your sentiment indicators indicated that we're a little frothy, or have they eased back to set us up for a grind higher? No, in fact, in fact, if anything... Um They've changed. The, the, some of them are getting notably worse quick. So, uh, if anything, we've. I've. This is like one of the newer things I've seen recently. And this recently being two, three days. A um, lot, lot of things have kind of ramped back up. Um, whether it's a diffusion index, whether it's a an oscillator, whether it's McClellan, whether it's the, you know, the percent of stocks above various moving averages is, is exceedingly, exceedingly um, pumped up. Um, one, one thing I, 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 this is, I have a proprietary measure of the CPC. I'm not going to get into details because. What does CPC stand for? Uh, put call ratio. It's put call ratio. Oh, okay. Um, so CB, it's a CBOE. Uh, put call ratio exactly. So I have my own version of it, and it's it's at a very very elevated level right now. Or I guess you could say it's at a very low level. It's, it, it depends on how you how you have your chart or how you have the number formatted. Um, again, it's kind of a self styled thing for me. But it, it, again, nothing's a guarantee. But I would say every time I kind of see the setup like this. And we're probably talking 85, 90% odds of, of selling. So, again, that, that doesn't, you know, 85% doesn't mean 100 because nothing's ever 100, but that, that's pretty high. And, and, again, you know, I'm not, I mean, just to be clear, I'm not net short, you know. Um, there's just some positions I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep. There's, there's uh, large positions I'm going to keep. Um, I also don't think we have a, a market structure of one that I'm going to get nor net short, at least not now, because I, I think we go to higher highs. But, you know, I mean, I've, as you've seen, I've raised a lot of cash, not putting on a lot of buys. I think, um, you know, tactically adding some shorts. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, I mean, here, 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 here's a better way to look at it. So, sometimes I mean, sentiment's great, and I'm, I'm very good with it. But... Sometimes the easiest thing to look at it, here. Let's just talk about this. Okay, so yeah, I'm getting my spreadsheet open. Okay, so between now and Thursday, Palo Alto, Vive, Best Buy, TJ Maxx, Alteryx, Box, Elastic, Square, Autodesk, Nutanix, Splunk, VMware, Workday, Zscaler all report between today and Thursday. Oh, so you got a busy um, day. You got a busy week ahead, almost as well, much but, but, as last but week. Well, let me let me finish the point. So, so here's the main point: that that every one of those names to a name is either extremely well liked or loved. They're all hedge fund favorites. They've all been bid up. That that's a lot of FOMO. So so, um, and, and by the way, I think the vast majority of those names is going to have very good reports. But is that is any of that going to be a surprise? Is 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 Pandora beating and raising, Vive beating and raising, AYX beating, Splunk beating and raising? Are is any of that a surprise? I'd say no. So the surprise would be, hey, okay, so is Splunk gonna trade to twenty times sales? Um, is Vive gonna trade to twenty times sales? Are we gonna are we gonna trade to somewhat similar ratios that we traded to in ninety nine? Again, we're not even we're close to 99, but are we, are we going to kind of get to, to numbers that kind of more resemble 98, 99 type price sales ratios than 2017 and 18? I, I don't think we're going to. So, so, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, could every single one of those companies report so good that they go up like Trade Desk went up? Uh, it is possible. But we're, put, put it this way, the boulder is getting heavy. The weight's getting heavy. <laughs> the FOMO's getting heavy. I mean, that's a lot of FOMO to hold up. Um, so, hey, by the way, I mean, I'm very content if 90% of the names go, go up 10, 15, 20%. Because that means every single long I have is going to do very well. 
um, that means my portfolio is going to increase a lot in value. Um, but I don't think, uh, you know, here, let's put it this simply. What if Pan, W, and Vive both have great numbers and their stocks don't go up? Then what if tomorrow morning Best Buy and TJ Maxx have great numbers and their stocks don't really go up? Then what if AYX and Box and Elastic report great numbers and their stocks don't go up? Okay, so let's just say that happens. What You tell me how much the NASDAQ is going to drop. 2%, 3%, 5%. It's not going to go up. So, so you know, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, like I say, I, I put it this way. I'm very content to stay in cheap fiber optics. I'm very content to buy more Baidu. I'm very content to buy Spotify at 140 if it drops another six points. I'm very content to, you know, I haven't added Qualcomm for a long time. I'm starting to kind of think about adding Qualcomm. Um, again, I'm, I'm lining up my beaten up cheap growers. You know, I'm very content to add to them. If, if they pull back, I'm very content, or I'm very content to add to them if they trade poorly and the Momos go up. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. But I mean, that's, I mean, I don't know, how many names is that? One, two, three, four, five, about 12, 50 names. Ah, that's a lot of FOMO to hold up. I'll, I'll end it there. All right. So you had a really busy week last week with a bunch of fiber optic names and uh, some other tech names that you've been tracking for uh, for quite a while now why don't we do a, a quick little recap and anything that you learned that may have either changed or supported your thesis on the fiber optic space and 5g 5g in general yeah okay well i mean the easy i, I put a good note out on the 22nd and i'm gonna kind of just use that as a close so so the, the the best the best name or one of my favorite names in the stock that had uh, really a report that was very similar to how they reported last quarter, by the way. The last quarter, the problem is, so this is Acacia. So the problem for Acacia's last report last quarter is, guess what? They reported right between the November and the December lows. So you had an absolute meltdown occurring at the time, so it didn't matter how good a report was, it was going to get sold off. Acacia did hold up pretty well, by the way. It, did, it didn't take near the damage. You know, if it, As you remember, I was, I was pretty relaxed during that whole sell-off. And there was two reasons. One, I had shorts on. Two, a lot of my favorite names really didn't trade very poorly. They, they, they went down, but they didn't go down to near the degree that all the stuff I'd said to not, you know, you're nuts if you're long it. Uh, all that stuff went down way, way more, you know, than the NVIDIAs and the FANGs and all that stuff. And so, but Acacia had, uh, I would say this is sort of their second material beat and raise quarter. I uh, it might be their third, but but the, the last quarter was a, a much stronger beat and raise. Uh, they might have beaten raise the quarter before, but it might have been minor, um, or it might have been like the guide was good and the current report was was bad. I'm talking two quarters ago, um, but that very very strong quarter. And again, Acacia guides pretty darn conservatively, and the guide was really good. So the fact that you know to me they're basically saying the you know forward numbers look better. And by the way, so the, 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 the thing I, I, I guess I'm going to stress the most, 5G isn't even in any one. I don't, I, it's not even in, in any one. Um, it, it's, it's, in, it's, in, it's in batting practice stages right now, or, or pregame warm-up is, is where 5G's at. Um, you know, 5G's going to be a long cycle. We're, we're really not even into the teeth of the, the cycle, let alone early innings. So, um, and I would say, too, you know, China is very weak um, for most of the fiber optic sellers, uh, U.S. is just warming up. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to, we're, we're not even in sort of the teeth of sort of the normal telco equipment upgrade cycle. And China's dead, dead flat. I mean, they're, you know, the China trade deal has really crimped them. So there, there's a whole lot of stuff that could, that could happen that, that is a positive catalyst versus a negative catalyst for the group and particularly for Acacia. And they, they talk, that's a good call to listen to. They talk about a lot of that stuff. So, so I would say that you know, they're fulfilling nicely the upside. I think the stock moves materially higher. Uh, light, I basically took my gains in light. I was a buyer in the low 40s, you know, got 10 to 15% on the first leg and 20% 20, 20 plus on the second leg. I still like light a lot, but I still think light, the, the risk to light is that they're not clean. They're not a pure fiber optic name. They're fiber optic and 3D sensing, 3D sensing into the Apple iPhone. The Apple iPhone still has many quarters of weakness in my view ahead. So, so light is in, in light. My, I still think light is losing market share to the IIBI Finisar combo. 
So, so I'm more of a trader of light, even though I, my price target's a lot higher on the name long term. I really like the name long term. I just think, you know, I think in a quarter or two, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to buy light at current prices or, or lower. Or, I'll, or there'll be plenty of times it'll just peel back and I'll be able to trade it and or buy it. Um, Calm was a name I had. I, I have a little time, like a trailer position on now. Um, that was a muted quarter, and I was I was really hoping for for Com. This is Com Scope, C O M M. I was really hoping that they would have sort of a material pullback. I was kind of they they reported almost exactly kind of what I thought they were going to report, which is sort of like a a, te, a, a kind of a a mediocre muted quarter, not much excitement in it. They they don't even sell off. It's like it's like a, it's you know I'm starting to get a little frustrated because. Well, okay, maybe everybody's kind of got the got the memo that that these names are are names to hold or buy and accumulate. Um, you know, I'd like to buy a calm. I don't know. I, ideally, kind of twenty or lower. I might have to raise kind of raise that view and, and buy it higher. Um, uh, I have yet reported a while ago. Again, really good report. I'm, I, I reiterated this at their last quarter that. You know, what did they do when light missed and guided very poorly? Everybody just assumed 2.6 was going to miss or guide or, or you know, miss and guide the next quarter lower. Hey, I 2.6 hasn't missed. They never guided lower. And they stole Finisar. So I think that's stock. In fact, I'm thinking about raising my price target on that name. Um, and, then, and then AOI was very interesting. Again, I, I kind of I thought, I mean, I wrote this literally – that, that I thought the last two ground downgrades might be bottom tick downgrades. That's almost exactly what it looks like. So you, you often see this. You have analysts kind of panic or they, they, they do a very late, late yield time downgrade when all the bad news is basically known. <clears throat> and so, you know, it's a bottom tick. And the, the, the thing that surprised me is the stock's three bucks higher than the lows. It didn't really surprise me that it kind of went to 13 and then bounced. I thought it would go to maybe, you know, go low bounce kind of hold that 1350 to 1450 area a thing bounced three bucks so i there might be a fair amount of short covering there because i think that had a pretty high short interest uh still don't really like the name but i mean i think that tells you everything you want to know i think that that you know aoi is probably a decent a decent name to to, to buy on dips um i think the last time i talked about in that last note was viavi viavi has some some stuff that's uh you know, proprietary. They got some pretty good 3D sensing product. Um, it's it's a decent it's a decent 5G play. Um, and, you know, there, there's some other stuff. The, the 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 name that I think is is might be one of the more interesting names now because most of the others I've talked about a lot. People, anybody wants, just type any of those tickers in. I've written a lot on all those names. Um, Infinera is pretty interesting. You know, I've been building this positions kind of off and on over time. Kind of every time it has a puke low, I buy some. Um, they actually had a, pr a better quarter than I expected. And what I mean by that is uh, I, I, I always liked the Corant buy. So they did a merger. They bought a, they bought a private company out very, very incredibly cheaply. It's like literally I think they paid 0.48 times sales of, of Corant. Uh, again, in a tech world where we're, we're seeing a lot of companies get sold, software companies get sold for, you know, eight, nine, ten times sales. I mean, if you can buy something at point, point five times sales or less, that's a pretty good buy, um, even if it's a lower margin hardware sale. But the most interesting thing there is that they, they guided full year numbers pretty much to plan to what they were before. Um, uh, I I think the Corrient buy is gonna be potentially a big deal for them. Um, it's not a name I love. I, I still, you know, I always say my top three are basically MTSI uh, two six and Acacia. Uh, Acacia is not in the thirties anymore though. It's in the high fifties. So so I, um, you know, I mean, I got a price target quite a bit higher, but I, you know, now I'm kind of sniffing around. I'm probably not a, a buyer of Acacia. I'd need a pretty good. I'll hold what I have. If I get another 50 to 100% on it, that's great. But I'm probably not going to buy a lot more Acacia with fresh money. So now I'm going to hunt what hasn't moved, what's still cheap. Um, I'd probably like Calm the next best. If I had to pick a number four or number five, uh, I really like Comscope in the group. But there again, I kind of want it three bucks cheaper. I'm not going to chase it. And again, I think, I think the market's going to give us plenty of chances this year to buy stuff on sell-offs just because we haven't just because we haven't had a sell-off for six weeks doesn't mean we're not going to have plenty this year um but yeah infinite is interesting i mean it's a very i mean but put it this way i think i've written this before the stock could basically go up 50 percent still be exceedingly cheap 
So, you know, we could trade seven fifty, eight fifty nine bucks, and it would still be probably one of the cheaper stocks in the group. Um, but guess what? You know, I've said the same thing on FireEye for a year. FireEye could could go up fifty percent, maybe even double, and was still traded at a huge discount to almost every name in the cyber cybersecurity space. And yet FireEye hasn't gone up 50% to 100%. It's kind of stayed where, where it is. So uh, just because something's cheap doesn't mean it's go up. But, but usually if something's that cheap, you have very little risk to the downside. So and if you have very little risk to the downside, you're, you know, you're not subject to losing a lot of money. Um, and, you know, so then you can place bets and other things and you can trade or you can get heavier weightings and, and things. Um, but yeah, Infinera is interesting. I'm still looking around the group. There, there's, there's some other names I'm kind of sniffing around, re really beating up names. Um, but the, 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 the stuff that's beaten up is, is a little tougher in this space because I'm not, you know, I still think 2.6 is cheap. I still think light's cheap, you know, on, on metrics versus like chip companies. They're very cheap. I mean, two six and light basically trade at probably. I have to go look to get get the exact number, but this is going to be pretty close. They probably trade at like a fifty percent discount to a company like Skyworks. Uh, and I would argue their growth for the next two to four years is probably going to be higher, maybe significantly higher than a Skyworks. Uh, I'm trying to think of another chip stock that's kind of middle of the road. I mean, they these companies trade massively cheaper than something like an Nvidia even now, even after. It's been cut in half. They're, these two, Light and IIVI probably trade at a 75, 80% valuation discount to an NVIDIA. And again, I'm not so sure these, those two companies might, well, you know, for the next two, three years, I, I bet they outgrow NVIDIA. I mean, they might not because NVIDIA might, might kind of find another growth leg again. Um, I'm trying to think a name escapes me. I don't know. Just pick a run-of-the-mill chip maker that's kind of middle of the road. I don't know, maybe a microchip or... Um, you know, uh, well, Texas Instruments is very expensive too. I know it's hard. It's actually hard to find a really cheap semi. Um, so uh, the bottom line is th those two companies trade at huge discounts to sort of a traditional semiconductor maker. And historically, the fiber optic group and the semi is sort of, uh, for many many years, have traded at pretty similar valuations on price to sales and things like that. So, um, like, so like I said, I, this is not one where I feel like I got to stretch and really dumpster dive for some for something that's really cheap. I'd rather dumpster dive for something that's cheap but has a growth inflection coming. That's I think I think Infi I N F N or it's not Infi, it's Infinera. I think Infinera uh, has a potential growth inflection coming. All right, so safe to say that as of right now, your favorites in the space, MTSI, IIVI, Acacia, which may be flirting those are with. Still, those are still my top three. I've always said those are my top three. Uh, I've pretty much, well, Finistar used to be the top three, but then obviously IIVI is buying them. So, so the merger... The merge company, I think, is even better, but but now the merge, the the, the head of the merge company is going to be IIVI, not Finisar. But yeah, so right. it's, it's basically the same. It's the same three names that are in my top three. And on, honestly, I don't really have to go beyond those. I could just I could just stick with those top three. But I just think there's so many opportunities. I mean, like Calm was kind of just a like a throw a throw out pick. I mean, geez, I think I bought that in the, like the mid to high teens, and it, you know, it went up like fifty percent. So, you know, I mean, that's the thing. There's huge opportunities in these names if you can if you can buy them when they're cheap and when other people are selling them off and they're so dirt cheap. And again, we're very early innings of, of, of 5G. By the way, Calm kind of had that same victimized deal. So, so we've talked about the companies that acquired other companies last year were just massively victimized and sold off. And, you know, Calm is buying uh, Arist, which I think is a very good deal for them long term. A uh, ton of synergies, ton of cost savings. Uh, the combined revenue is going to be even better. But it's, I don't know if there's like revenue growth synergies. There's, there's much more cost synergies there. Um, but it strengthens the overall 5G portfolio of both companies because it's complementary. Um, comms especially strong in, you know, wireless, wireless infrastructure. Uh, Aris is especially strong in cable infrastructure. So the, the combined two... Um, you know, uh, theoretically are probably better comps or better uh, competitive threats versus the bigger companies that compete against. So it's, it's a good deal. But again, Com got massively victimized, I think, just by the fact that they're buying another company, just like IAVI did, just like Cloudera has been. I mean, there's a bunch of companies that have bought other companies and their stocks did nothing but, but go. It quit. That quit happening, by the way, as we turned the calendar, as I kind of thought that would. That in fact, 
a ton of my January effect stocks were simply companies that had bought other companies and then traded lower because of that. But yeah, the, the top three are the same top three. But, you know, I'm hunting around. I'm, I'm, I have longs and other names. I'm hunting for new names. Um, you know, I might divest of something that, that goes up a lot and swap funds into another name and things like that. All right. So when you go hunting, as you just said, what, what's the criteria that you're really focusing on right now? Mm, I, I don't think I have a, a, an exact answer to that because the criteria is different for for other names. So, you know, if it's a chip company that's levered to 5G, that criteria is going to be different. If it's fiber optic, that's going to be different. If it's 3D sensing. It's, I, so I, I don't really have an answer to that, unfortunately. Well, that was a disappointing answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, what, what's, the, what's the thing I do with everything, right? I, I look at stuff that's going to be, become a growth leader, not what already is known as a growth leader. Okay, so, so I mean, so there's one. There's got to be some I, I, commonality in some of the things that you're looking at then. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of earnings reports to digest, lots of, you know, tea leaf reading. Um, you know, I've been pretty good at, pretty good on I mean, again, I, every single one of these cloud names that everybody loves now, I was on them, but I wasn't buying them at 75 to 100. I was buying, you know, 18 to 30. So, you know, I mean, this is what I do. I, I you know, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but, but yeah, I have a pretty good knack for finding, uh, you know, finding companies that have, I mean, a lot of it's just, Hey, what's growing? That's cheap. I mean, Baidu, I, you know, I mean, maybe this, this name is irritating some, some listeners or something. I love it. I love Baidu. I didn't like Baidu for four and a half years. I didn't miss anything by not being in long Baidu for four and a half years. It was the same company that whole time. Um, by the way, Baidu's not a 5G play. But, 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 you know, you're talking about looking for what could become a new leader versus, versus you know, a fang or an old leader. Um, Hey, you know, Baidu's kind of done nothing but double in size over roughly a four-year period. They might have even done more than double in four and a half years. I haven't missed a single thing not being in them. Um, I did very well when I was long the name before. And uh, they had a very good quarter. And, okay, so the stock's dropped since the quarter. I could, I could care less. I'm, I'll, I'll buy more of it. I mean, that's exactly what I like. I, I like when other people – I'll buy other people's pain – if I'm right, and I'm 100% right on Baidu, I'm not a bit worried about about what getting paid on Baidu. I just don't know when I'm going to get paid. It could be two weeks, could be two months, could be two quarters. I don't think it's going to take two years to get paid really well. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I think I, something like a Baidu is very interesting to me here. Again, didn't like it. Lots of people loved it. Uh, lots of people loved paying up for Baidu after a huge run. Uh, that was a huge, huge winner for roughly a two to a three period. Again, I owned it for about half that length of time. I'm talking kind of 2010-ish to probably 14. But I think, you know, if you bought stock, at the, you know, the top quartile of its trade range in 2014, you're down about 60 points over four years. And it's probably been a very frustrating trade because the company's done nothing but perform well. They haven't performed poorly. It's just the stock that got ahead of itself. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's kind of an easy one. Uh, I think, I think the frustration, yeah, it just, it just, pardon, I think the frustration that comes in with uh, a name like Baidu is you went out with a long call and it just so happened that China rallied over the last, uh, last few sessions or so i mean it was up uh between friday and monday in the neighborhood seven eight percent and this one just lagged with it it didn't follow the rest of china and you would think a leader like this would do such a thing so i think that's where the frustration came in with some of the listeners especially with this one well you know i it's uh hey you can't um stocks move when they move they don't move when they when we want them to move well Let's put it in perspective then. Uh, some other, some, uh, some, some of the questions that you get uh, are regarding a, a, a lot of your timing issues. So let's put everything in context. And when I know you're not going to get pinned in a corner and say when a specific stock is going to move up and hit your price target objective. I know you don't have control over that. But when you put something on in a uh, a nutshell type scenario. How long are you actually expecting this? Just a ballpark variety. Um. Well, I mean, some stuff can. I mean, 
I mean, I've had tons of stuff in very short periods of time. I mean, SVMK was a five day. I mean, I don't know. I've got to go look and look at all the things I've posted on here, but I've had plenty of names that have returned, I don't know, five to 20 percent in eight days or less. But that that's 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 more uh, a swing trade. That's also everything kind of has to go right. There's probably a little bit of luck involved. Um, so I, you know, I guess I don't. I don't I don't overly worry about the time frame. So there's there's two there's two answers to your question. One, I don't overly worry about the time frame because to make to make maximum returns, if you're if you're trying to overly get overly precise on the when of, of something's gonna move, um, you know, you're probably gonna miss a lot of opportunities. You're gonna end up doing a lot of trades, end up being losers and stuff like that. Um, but as far as, I don't know, I mean, I, I would say if, you know, usually something, uh, I don't know, a lot of my stuff has moved really, really strongly in, I don't know, a couple quarters. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even think I was in Nutanix for a whole year. It felt like I was, but I'm not sure I was even in that name a full year. So, I mean, you know, I got two, two X plus, almost three X out of that, you know, in two quarters, roughly two, three quarters uh you know caught some of that trade really well there was a bit you know you it, it depends on usually you need an inflection quarter um i mean i've been i've been in a partial long for acacia for at least 18 months um i was short that i think i was short that name i think that was pre-briefing days though um so yeah it just depends i mean i, I my short worked on aoi within within days to weeks so I again I don't know if there's really a clean answer because I think that you know to try to time something to the hour a day even a week or I, I think it's false precision so I don't know I, I would probably answer that question kind of like a Warren Buffett where look if you know you have a good name and, and you like the price you know I, I buy some and I might trade around that core position but basically if the company keeps delivering and executing really well and the price gets cheaper, I don't like it less, I like it more. And I, I worry less about the timing. I worry less about, um, you know, hey, is this going to make me money in two weeks? I, again, I, I think that's poor trader behavior, uh, honestly. You know, now, now if, you, if you're setting up a trade for an intraday trade, well, that's got to be an intraday trade. That's a whole different animal. You know, if you're setting up a trade for an overnight swing, well, same thing, it's an overnight swing. Um, and I've done that, but I, I, I frame it as such. I, I describe the trade as a, as a quick or, or fast swing or an overnight swing. And honestly, I don't post a ton of that stuff. Uh, I, you know, I don't really have the time uh, to, to post a lot of that stuff. So, um, you know, everything I try to put on briefing tends to be more, uh, you know, it's, it's roughly 85 to 90 percent of my investment positions. I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't have, uh, there, there's a lot of guys on the, on the site um, that are very good at posting a lot of short-term trades. So I, I don't know. I, I don't really necessarily think that you guys need another, another guy throwing out short-term trading ideas. So and it, that's not really my role uh, for briefing. Yeah, and I would concur. And uh, but sometimes you do, and sometimes you hit on those. Um, so I think it's well, just... like to say I describe it. I I, I didn't think I, I'm pretty sure I, I I don't think I said uh, I don't think I framed up or said uh, SVMK was was anticipated to be. You know, put it this way: if I'm buying something on a on a a good report that's down. 15, 20, 25 percent, and I say, hey, I think this report's good. It's probably relatively quick. Uh, I'm just looking right here. I was in, I was in uh, SVMK less than six days, but but that's, you know, that that doesn't. Uh, but I've all, I've, I've been in, you know, Acacia more than six quarters. So, um, but I, I think I'm usually pretty clear. I, 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 you know, I try to frame stuff as such. So I don't, I, I don't think I've given like. Um, um, false expectations on on talking about certain names that they're gonna that they're gonna have these monumental returns you know in short periods of time. I mean, I always say my my price target is a one to a two year price target. All right, so one to two year price target that that puts things in concept. Context yeah, but yeah, well. two years is pretty long. Yeah, so one to two years, I would say you know again three to six quarters is typical. All right, so you said you're starting to warm up to uh, adding to Qualcomm here around this $53 area. Is it a zone, or is there something else that's uh, – No, this is really easy. It's just, uh, again, we all know, you know, the issues with the but, – but it's really more, the more stocks that just keep levitating, the more Qualcomm screens is a better buy. 
It's it's really that simple. It's 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 why I'm sort of attracted to to INFN. Um, you know, the, the, now we've had a lot of these fiber optic names. Again, all my top fiber optic names have have gone up huge, and um, so so now the stocks that are dirt cheap stand they stand out even more. So you know, Infinera didn't really stand out as a, as a as a super attractive buy. You know, when IVI was thirty, or when you know Acacia was thirty. Um, or when Viavi was eight or nine, but but when you know when the stock's still here, or roughly the same price, maybe a little lower, maybe a little higher, but prob- actually probably lower. So when the stock's another ten percent or fifteen percent lower, and the rest of the groups moved up, I don't know, thirty, thirty-five, forty percent, it, it's that much more attractive. Um, so so it, it's 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 just like that. It's a, you know, hey, the more work day goes up. Um, you know, the more Xilinx goes up, uh, you know, the, the more the more the stocks that are the hot Momo stocks go up and, and Qualcomm doesn't, the more attractive it is. Wow. I, there, there is still p- potentially headline risk. But again, I don't again, you know, this is that one that funny thing we talked about it, like, you know, the, the fa- it was just hysterical. The thing went down on, on that short report because the short report was basically analyst consensus it was wall street analyst consensus because no nobody expects or or was banking on a good ftc ruling and and um so that was known information um but yeah no i mean I, like I say the more st- the more other stuff goes up and it doesn't the more attractive it is all right so before we check out for the day uh there's a couple of listener questions one in particular you already mentioned it in spotify so let me pull that one up on the chart and get the question in particular wants to know if i can ask what you think about spotify above 142 looks like it got eaten up this morning on a quick bounce back up to 147 potential shallow pullback long well, I, I mean, I, 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 I actually think it might be a good tactical trade. The, the problem is, okay, so if the NASDAQ really peels, is Spotify going to go up? I mean, a Twitter could go up if the market goes down. Qualcomm actually could hold or even rise in a down. I mean, there are some stocks that have shown pretty consistent propensity to hold or, or rise during market sell-offs. I don't think Spotify would be one of those. I think Spotify, if you get a nasty, even a short-term nasty NASDAQ correction, I think Spotify would get hit. I think it'd get hit relatively hard. But but again, I I, I think it's a very attractive name. Uh, I mean I mean one twenty to one thirty was crazy. One forty is not that far from one thirty. So so especially percentage wise. Um, and I've been very clear on this. You know, this is I replaced I can't remember what in software name I replaced, but I, I replaced one of my former huge winners. Might have been CyberArk actually with Spotify. And so so uh, now, now that was lower. Uh, I think it was high 120s, maybe 126 to 128 sounds about right. Uh, wasn't wasn't the absolute lows on it, um, but but I I mean I I think I got a what a 203 target on this, and I I would say it's probably one of my more conservative targets actually. I the the, the two targets I have in my focus list that I actually think of the most conservative are Twitter's and Spotify's targets. I mean Twitter's target have barely moved. I had, I had a 44 on Twitter when the stock was 14 and I've only moved it up a few bucks. Um, but it was because, Hey, I, I, I literally expected Twitter would triple and it did. And, and so, you know, I was way, way out of consensus, way more bullish on a name that everybody in the world hated. And, uh, but I've only moved my target up seven bucks on Twitter and as, as Twitter has tripled. So, um, but, but I, I would view my kind of my 51 ish target as, as, getting very very conservative i probably should increase it frankly because i i actually think it's going to trade well above 50. um but but of the two targets i would say are the most conservative um in my focus list are twitter and spotify i mean spotify could trade way way well above 200. it's, it's put it this way at 200 it's it's still really well valued at 200. it's it's um where would that be exactly it would be it would it would be basically four and a half four and a half times sales at 200. I mean, that, that's not a stretch valuation at all. So, it looks like I lost Tech T. Bear with me and see if we can get him back on.
Well, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, he was in the middle of talking about uh, his answer, and all of a sudden, just it just uh, as if he just fell off the map. And now I can't reconnect, so um, that was actually the last question I had from the listeners out there. It was on Spotify. So I guess we will wrap that one up uh, a little earlier than usual. So. <laughs> Uh, a lot of good stuff from Tech T. Uh, just to kind of recap what we talked about. Oh, there he is. Let's see if I can get him. Hey, Tech T. What did I say to make you hang up on me, man? Um, I have no idea. Hey, you know, I am on a cell phone. Um, so where did you lose me? Uh, y you were you were kind of wrapping things up on Spotify. Yeah, no. I mean, I'd, I'd relish an opportunity to buy this uh, in the in the mid to high 130s. And if we have a decent market correction, I think I'll get it there again. All right. Well, I. But by the way, I mean that doesn't mean uh, you know I, I'm going to keep some of it, right? I'll keep some of it um, for you know for my target plus. I, I I don't know if you heard this. I I would say my two most conservative targets are spit. Or Twitter and Spotify. I don't know if you heard that or not. Yeah, yeah, we did catch that one. Okay. All right. So as far as the let me uh, let me get something in because I think we're yeah, gonna please wrap do. pretty yep. soon. Uh, Vicor is an interesting company. Uh, What's that ticker? Report tonight. V I C R. Uh, a couple guys in your side have done some pretty good work on this name. I've kind of trailed off that. Um, I, I'm gonna take some Vicor into the print. It's fee it's a feast famine name, but when it when the feast is usually pretty darn good. Um, I'm also playing with a huge cushion right now, so I can take a few tactical chances, and I, I like this end of the print. And again, while, while I don't like, uh, and again, remember, Palo Alto was a focus list name of mine, 135. Um, th th you know, there's a lot of names reporting the neck that I went through that I like. I mean, Splunk was a former one of my top three largest positions for, for almost two years. So, so there's plenty of names reporting I really like. I don't really like them at current prices right now, um, but I do. I do like. I do like Vicor into the print tonight. I think it's I, put it this way: if it works, it pays you. If it doesn't work, hey, you eat. You're going to eat the trade. But, but I think that if it does work, this this name has a propensity to to spike pretty good. Um, and I like the sell off. If you pull up a chart of this, you know. This has had, you know, a fair amount of hype, but the hype was kind of justified on these really big beats that they that they produced. Um, I, I uh, again, you, Robert Reed ha has been on the name. I don't know if he's still. Uh, he it was one of his top picks for a while. He probably took it off at higher. He might have added it back lower. Um, but like I said, this I put it this way: for for these are exactly the kind of things I'm tactically doing right now. I'm not. I'm not making a lot of big bets right now. I need a sell off to do that. But uh, you know, I'll put a little bit of money at play and 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 swing it again. I think it's a pretty good pitch. Um, and and hey, it, it, I might not hit it, but but if I hit it, it, it should be a pretty big, pretty good mover. And how would you play it via options or just uh, buy the stock? Oh, I don't know. I'm just. I'm, I'm personally. I'm just doing a, a, a little bit of common myself. I, I could. I could look. I, you know. To be honest, I just haven't even looked. Uh, looked much at the options. Um, you, you. You know. Hey. You could. You could. You could fire at some. Uh, fire at some calls. I, I honestly, though, I haven't looked at the chain on this one much. So I. I, I think I looked a couple months out, and I, I kind of thought the option I was looking for kind of seemed kind of pricey. So I'm like, eh, you know, and, and I don't really know why it's selling off uh, in particular recently. I, I know why it sold off. You know, they, one of their direct customers is NVIDIA. So, so as NVIDIA goes, obviously that, that's going to hurt uh, Vicor, which is selling in NVIDIA. Now, here's the interesting thing. Vicor doesn't sell stuff that helps um, uh, crypto rigs. You know, it's it's 48 volt technology that's basically used in data center and AI type applications. Um, you know, most mostly data center. So so my guess is, and I think I think I remember hearing this on the call. I think the data center biz for for Nvidia is still fine. It's it's probably one of their better businesses. Um, 
And, and again, part of the reason NVIDIA fell had nothing to do with really current fundamentals. It had more to do with the fact that the stock, a chip company, traded as an expensive software company. And that just chip companies shouldn't trade as expensive software companies. So, so you know, uh, a lot of the, so it's not like the, the, the downturn is, is, has been due to, you know, horrific sales or something out of NVIDIA. The the 50% haircuts pretty much has been a valuation haircut on, now you can say, well, they missed and they've guided lower. Well, they have, but the, the, the biggest issue for NVIDIA wasn't, wasn't a cycle. It was, it was the fact that Again, they traded unlike a unlike a, a company that they should trade like. They should trade like a chip company because that's what they are. And I think I even had the comparison between Nvidia and Workday. Again, you, at one point, Nvidia was had a huge premium to Workday, and Workday being a fairly expensive software company. So, um, but yeah, so that's happened. But I, I think the end markets for Vicor are relatively stable, if not improving. All right. Well, let's leave it at that because uh, we can uh, let listeners dive yeah, into Yeah, you're that heading out and, quick, aren't you, or something? Yeah. So, yeah. Vicor, V-I-C-R, new one for you. All right, Tech T. Well, thank you so much for getting us up to speed as to what your thoughts were on the fiber optic earnings. And uh, we'll look forward to doing some recaps uh, next week. Sounds good. Take care. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. All right. Okay, so glad we were able to patch back in because uh, if we would have left off where that call dropped off originally, we wouldn't have got that VICR trade. So there you go. Uh, that's the latest from Tech T. And uh, if you missed any portion of it, we should have this one archived and posted to the site later on this afternoon. So you can uh, check back in and listen to that at your convenience.